I'm Ryan Gage, and you're listening to Chris Gordon on Ramblings of a Hellblazer. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, listeners, wherever you may be. This is Chris Gordon, and you are listening to Ramblings of a Hellblazer. I thank you very much for joining it and listening in today. Um, it is my absolute pleasure uh, to bring these interviews to you and to get your questions asked. And I thank you all for the support that you give me. I hope you've all had a wonderful Christmas and a fantastic New Year. I have had a few weeks uh, downtime, and then back into 2016 with hopefully a lot more exciting things coming up for uh, for the podcast here and for you guys to actually listen to. So without further ado, I shall kick off the Ramblings of a Hellblazer 2016 with an interview with well-known actor of both stage and screen. He was King Louis in BBC's Musketeers. Um, which comes for a season three very shortly. Very, very fantastic character, very well-liked character within there, as well as Alfred in The Hobbit. So without further ado, my friends, um, I bring to you tonight the fantastic, the wonderful, the man with the engaging smile, Ryan Gage. Okay, good evening, everyone. And tonight I have the absolute pleasure of bringing to you the man with the engaging smile, who I've just <laughs> made. <laughs> there is a big smile on the screen for me. Uh, Mr. Ryan Gage, star of BBC's The Musketeers and obviously of The Hobbit as well. Uh, good evening, Ryan. How are you? Hi. Hi, Chris. <laughs> good good, good evening. Yes, yeah, so this is an absolute honour. Thank you very much for doing this uh, and coming on to my little podcast. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're most welcome. <laughs> After I uh, bugged you at Comic Con, <laughs> that's right. Well, you 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 seemed so friendly, so I thought <laughs> it would be a nice thing to do. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and I do appreciate the chocolate orange slice as well. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> My son obviously refused point blank to take anything from you. <laughs> Quite right too. <laughs> yeah. Quite right too. You shouldn't take sweets from strangers. Oh no, no, uh, that did uh, is. Makes us laugh every time we think about that. <laughs> cool. Okay, so that's, yeah, I've got some questions here, um, some general questions. One's about the Musketeers and then questions about the Hobbit as well, um, which we'll just go through and just to get some stories from you as well, from, from the, your sets that you've been on. So the first couple of questions are some general ones here. It is what or, what or who inspired you to get into acting? Well, that's a good question. Um... I mean, there are lots of lots of different people, I suppose. Some from my personal life, mm-hmm. family members and teachers and things like that. I suppose lots, lots and lots. Uh, but people that um, uh, people on you, listening to your podcast may have heard of, I suppose. I, su- I was a huge Michael Jackson fan when I was a kid. Oh, okay. And I think. Uh, Watching him, and I've sort of said this in interviews before, but it's it doesn't it's still true that his sort of physical articulacy, his sort of brilliance, uh, ex- his expression, mm-hmm. uh, the way that he was sort of became different characters within his dancing and within his singing, uh, you know, from moment to moment, always struck me as an extraordinary thing, and I think I. Um, I wanted to sort of do something similar. Now I didn't have his dancing ability, but yeah. I I I like the way that he sort of. Do you know what I mean? The way, the way he's sometimes a a tough guy, and sometimes he's like a sort of angelic sort of choir boy or something, uh-huh. and the next minute he's sort of sensitive or sexy, or and I was always struck by the many sort of colours and sides. To him, mm-hmm. <laughs> that sounds silly. <laughs> but you know what I mean. The, yeah. uh, the, the of, of the performer, not yeah. the man. And um, and uh, so so there was that. But but lots of lots of things. You know, later on, I sort of discovered Scorsese and and uh, you know uh, Francis Ford Coppola and 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 all that sort of thing. Uh, is when I sort of bit fell in love with film, you know, but I was a bit older then. Yeah. And I suppose somewhere in between those things, I, you know, loved programs like British comedies that were on TV, you know, the old ones like Rising Damp and, and uh, you know, Fletch from um, <laughs> Porridge. Uh, Porridge and, yeah. you know, the wonderful performances of people like Leonard Ruster and, and uh, Ronnie Barker and, and great comedies like, I don't know, Blackadder and Red Dwarf and... 
um, you know, Rick and Eddie and the young ones and well, all of the young ones and, you know, all that stuff I, I loved. All of that stuff made me want to be a performer. I suppose it makes lots of people want to be a performer, you know. Um, uh, I, I, all, all of that stuff was very inspiring. I suppose it all just sort of came together. Um, well, and, and I actually went and did it in the end. Oh, yeah, fantastic. That's really good. Sounds like you've had the same sort of raising bringing up as I have on TV yeah, that, sort of, that, sort of, that sort of genre of uh, Blackadder <laughs> and Red Dwarf and, and yeah. the young ones yeah absolutely fantastic comedy, you know, performers and like you say Michael Jackson as well uh, he's got to be one of my all time favourites because regardless of the stories about him he's got to be I think the best stage performer I've ever seen and that sort of like you say the different characters he can portray and the shows that he actually put on were just phenomenal yeah exactly <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice a bit here. That's all right, I keep coughing. I've got, every time I speak, I've got a cough, so I apologise, I've got on mute. So. <laughs> cool. Do you prefer working in theatre or screen work? Or is it... um, I don't really prefer either. I'm really enjoying screen at the moment and, and have no immediate plans to return to the theatre, but that's only really because, um, I, I, as a touch wood, I keep being offered various bits of screen stuff. Um, yeah. And, you know, if you go and commit to theatre, that's something of a commitment. Um, and you sort of, you know, you can't sort of do both. And, I, and I'm enjoy having done theatre for such a long time, I'm really enjoying uh, learning about the screen. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you, know, you know, I mean, theatre is my home, really. It's where I started. I did it for a long, long time. And, and, and I will, I'm sure I will go back. Um, uh, uh, and and it'd be nice to mix. It probably would be nice to be more varied and mix it all up a bit more. But I, you know, I, I sort of feel like I'm I'm just having so much fun with the screen stuff, and it's so new to me still. Even after you know, however long have I been doing it now? Maybe six years properly as a solid sort of uh, career, as opposed to a stage career. Yeah. Um, but it still seems brand. You know, it's all very new. That's really cool. I think people are listening and probably will prefer you to be on the screen as well. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> all your gay jets will be there. <laughs> but we would would yes. love to keep you keep you on the screen as well. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's quite a nickname. Yeah, I know it is, isn't it? <laughs> it sort of conjures up very camp people from... Um, uh, what's that? Am I saying Sunset Boulevard? What are the jets from? Oh, God. I don't know. Is it... I I, my, my mind's gone blank. Yeah, no, I can't. <laughs> no, it's the the sharks and the jets. Was that from the sharks and the jets? I'm not sure on that one. Must be sunset. But, uh, I can't remember. Some, <laughs> I'm sure somebody will tweet it. Cut yeah. that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. So uh, you're, you're right. Nice. It's a hell of a name to have for yourself, and you've got your own hashtags. That's pretty cool. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's. Um, it's not really, it's, it's, uh, there's a, yeah, I mean, Twitter's a great place for people to have a laugh and, um, yeah. meet up and find friends with common interests. And I think that's, that's more what it's probably, it's less about me than about <laughs> a meeting point for other people, really. Yeah, all the fans but, getting together. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's lovely. It's like, the, you, you know, you, I sort of dip into it when I can and, uh, and it's it's lovely to have people to hear people sort of making friends with each other who have seen different bits of my work here and there and mm -hmm. start talking to each other. It's always it's quite touching, you know. And they they all seem very nice people. Awesome, great. What kind of role would you aspire to do? What, what's your sort of dream role? Well, I mean, <clears throat> I would like to play the classical parts in the theatre or on screen. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I'd love to play Hamlet. I'd love to play uh, the Scottish King. I'd love to play. Mm -hmm. Iago, and I'd love to play uh, Richard II and Richard III and King Lear and those things, and and, and other uh, you know less um, <laughs> other other Jacobeans that aren't Shakespeare. <laughs> that I could talk. Love Spanish Golden Age theatre and uh, some great sort of German theatre. Um, so there are there are great parts, great huge sort of roles that you'd be crazy not to want to get your teeth into. But um, in terms of filming and, and film parts you know i'm i'm open I, what i i'm quite lucky I, you know i'm a character actor mm -hmm. um and uh and relatively i aspire to be transformative and so it, i think it took me a little it took a little while for car casting directors perhaps to realize who i what my casting was maybe because yeah. 
because I've played a lot of roles in in various different uh, ways. I'm not sort of, I don't sort of stick to one thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, yeah, but but uh, but now I think people are starting to recognise that you can cast me in lots of different things, and uh, and hopefully I'll do my best at it. And <laughs> um, and so and and as a result, I, I get quite varied. Uh, you know, amount of things to do and characters. So I, I sort of, I don't really aspire to do any one particular role. I, I sort of look forward to what people ask me to do. And often, you know, that some of the auditions or some of the things I get offered are often very interesting and yeah. surprise even me sometimes. I mean, it was like that when I was in the theatre. I, I was quite varied in what I did. Yeah. And and it's and it, it's starting to be that way on screen as well. That's really fantastic. Well, it's good, like you say, every sort of role you get, you bring your own thing to it. So it's a whole new dimension. So, you, you know, whatever you do, it's it's always making you at that point in time. That I guess that'll be the best, you know, <laughs> the most the, the best experience you, that, that you can get at the time. So and the different variations you get. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm rambling. Rambling's <laughs> a bit hell, <hell-blazer. laughs> like, you think you know what I mean. Yeah, sort of, that manager. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I need it today. <laughs> I know, I didn't get any sleep last night at all. Oh, God, no. That's no good. <laughs> cool. Uh, okay, moving on to the next one. What would be the most difficult scene you've ever had to do across all of the work that you've done? Um, goodness me, that's a really hard question. Um, well, yeah, I mean... For, for different reasons, it's always hard if something is extremely funny and it's not mm. supposed to be. So, in this uh, current season, I don't know how much of this I can say. I better be very careful. Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> but um, yeah, in this current season of the Musketeers, we have Rupert Everett playing a character. I think that's common knowledge now, so I think I can say that. Okay. And in one scene. Uh, he he tried to say the word low the words low countries right but came up with something very different and very very dirty <laughs> and we subsequently just, <laughs> just fell about laughing and the director had to send us outside to separate corners because every time the words low countries was pronounced again mm one of us would just fall to pieces. <laughs> and, yeah, there were things... Like we had to close our eyes and do the scene. We had to <laughs> look in different directions. It was absolutely <laughs> impossible. Um, so that was... Uh, yeah, that was a very amusing and difficult. I can't think of anything sort of... If you mean sort of challenging in terms of acting, well, lots of things are, to be honest. I mean, yeah. anything you have never done before, really, there's always a sort of fear that you're going to... Uh, in, not do it your best, and, and you know, my approach to these things generally is to try to be fearless and to not worry about being bad, and hope that the editor or the director have some taste and will will edit around your appalling mistakes. Mm. It doesn't always happen, but <laughs> but generally speaking, you know, the only way to to do to, to sort of do something like that i think is to go for it because otherwise you end up sort of phoning in something too safe and who, yeah. like, it's not it's not really why i do what i do i don't want this to be a sort of you know i don't want this to be a sort of day at the office for me um i i'd rather sort of try and learn something and and to be honest if i look like an idiot and people go oh wasn't he terrible didn't he do some terrible acting there I couldn't really give a damn, you know. I, I probably know it more than they do. <laughs> so I, I, I'd rather learn something, get something wrong, and and take the risk that I might do something rather good, you know. Oh, and, and if I never ever do anything any good ever in my entire career, well, at least I tried. Well, yeah. What's that? What's that phrase? Something to do with regrets, isn't it? You might as well do it and regret it afterwards, and not do it and not and I then regret so. it for the risks. I really do think so. Take I mean, the risks, do you, it. Yeah, you learn things along the way, obviously, that, that sort of make you a bit more consistent. And yeah. You notice you're becoming more consistent because the way the editors sort of hang on you a bit more, <laughs> <and stuff laughs> like that. But 
at, at the same time, I would hate to, uh, you know, I'd hate to get sort of bored of what I do. So I sort of like to surprise myself, really. All right, cool. That sounds great. I do like the story about Rupert Everett. He, he's he's on IMDb. He's been in it, so you, you're all, you're all right with that one. Whew. <laughs> yeah, I won't have to edit that. That's <laughs> from the BBC lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> I was just checking it there while you're talking, just to make sure. I, I thought you were looking extremely uninterested in my story. Oh no, I wasn't. Un- <laughs> oh no, uh, thanks. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Cool. Um, what is there any kind of a location around the world that you'd love to film in? Oh yeah, loads of countries I'd love to film in. I'd love to go to. Uh, well, it's not a country; it's a continent. But I'd love to go to Africa. I've never been. Mm-hmm. I sort of had planned to. Uh, and then never quite made it. Um, and a lot of filming gets done in Cape Town, so I, I hope one day to see that. Oh, that'd um, be good. I, I'd love to go to Cuba. I'd love to see um, sort of Thailand and places like that. I mean, mm-hmm. any, it's uh, just wonderful to, to if you ever get to travel anywhere. When I went to New Zealand, it was obviously... I had actually been to New Zealand before, but um, you, you can never quite sort of get enough of that place. It's so beautiful. <laughs> And I took the opportunity to go to Australia as well while I was there. Um, and uh, obviously I've spent a lot of time in Prague. I haven't done that much filming uh, in different places, but um, yeah, I mean, goodness, anywhere really. All right, cool. I'm hoping to get to New Zealand later this year, actually. We're just sort of uh, discussing at the moment, having a, a three-week uh, vacation wait. over there. <laughs> where are you thinking of going? Uh, I'm not sure yet. That's kind of still where we're looking. It'll probably do a tour of both islands. Just oh, to try yeah. and take it as much as we can. Yeah, do it. That's the way to do it, definitely. Yeah. It's, it's fun. Try and get that. I want to see Middle Earth as well, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Peter Capaldi visited Middle Earth recently. I got I got a lovely photograph of him coming out of... Or maybe... Or was that a tweet? I can't remember now. These things all merge into one. But some, <laughs> somebody sent me a, a picture of him coming out of a Hobbit hole, and it may have been him. Uh, but But I did get a lovely phone call from him... And Peter Jackson and Philippa and and Fra and yeah. Fran, yeah. And uh at, with with Peter uh quite late at night over there and quite early in the morning for me. The day uh, that I met you at that convention. Oh yeah. <laughs> and um so that morning I'd been speaking to to Peter Jackson and Peter Capaldi. Oh, wow. <laughs> all the Peters in, in New Zealand while they were having a a rare old time by all accounts, and then that that hilarious Doctor Who video came out with them. Oh, God, that yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that was all. Yeah, so so um, I can't remember what I was talking about now, but that, I don't know why I told you that story. But, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, that, that's really cool. That was in New Zealand. Anyway. Oh, yeah, because yeah, cause he went to see The Hobbit. Yeah, he went to see The Hobbit um, and Place. Hobbiton. No, that's brilliant. That's really cool. Can't believe that the same day. It's, you know, just name dropping there, you know, piece. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, it was, uh, it, it, you know, I mean, they don't ring me every day, but they, they did ring me that day. <laughs> that's really cool. <laughs> okay, um, moving on now to some questions directed for the Musketeers. But before I do, I shall read out some feedback that uh, I've been reading about your role as obviously King Louis. Um, <laughs> oh, do, I, do I want to hear this? <laughs> no, it's all great. It's great. People are just saying. I mean, oh, you've so- edited. It. You've, you've I, edited that. I've edited out the but now there's no bad. <laughs> <Yeah. isn't it? laughs> okay, you got Bishop too. Says uh, obviously quoting you saying, "Look at him. Of course, he's my son." With your smile, then, uh, and saying, "I need a mirror to find a better likeness." Just saying that made him laugh. Uh, basically saying that your profile, you've done an amazing job with that role, especially given the change in character between season one and two. That you absolutely sold it. Uh, season, three. season three, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'd say that would be a... uh, Ryan... later. <laughs> yeah. Ryan Gage delivers the Child King really well. The way you reacted to your mother's presence or to Queen Anne coming back safe and sound after an attempt on her life are good examples. And not to mention the way you giggle every time you make a joke. <laughs> I do that anyway. That, that's not hard. Um, she was a lovely actress, actually. My mother, who played my mother, she was wonderful. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, there's just some of the fe- many feedback uh, and many comments online regarding your performance as King Louis. <laughs> that's very kind. Each and every one of them, they're very kind. Just thought I'd bring that. So, okay, first questions are from a Gabrielle Fritz on Twitter, and this is <laughs> I recognise that name. Actually, I think I see her name. Go All right. Later. Cool. Uh, what did you enjoy most in shooting season three? that you're allowed to talk about <laughs> um i didn't have to shave primarily that was the first 
plus. Okay. okay. Um, no, there was there were there were there were um, lots of extraordinary things. It's a little bit later on. Time has moved on. I don't know mm-hmm. how much of this has been released yet, so I need to be careful. But time has moved on. So so you know, and so has Louis, and so I enjoyed. Yeah, like uh, you know, making that step. Yeah, and finding where he was in his life and and how the years that had passed and the experiences he'd had up until that point had shaped and evolved his personality so i really enjoyed that um i also got some great scenes this year um i think i'm probably in it a little less than i was in season two right but when i'm in it uh it's really good stuff and I, I sort of, and I'm, and I'm quite happy with that, really. Yeah. Uh, you know, because they're, they're, they're always really great scenes. Um. So, so yeah, that, that's the sort of thing I really enjoyed. And there's some, yeah, and, and there was some, lo- there's lovely actors in it this year, as, as always, are lovely actors. But there's tons of new actors in it. Okay. So it's, all, it's all very, very refreshed in that regard. Mm-hmm. Um. And and all the old favourites as well. So. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's a great series. Fantastic. I'm um, going back to saying how and many lots of, scenes. And lots of, and lots of uh, uh, great directors as well, and old favourite directors coming back. All right, fantastic. Well, it's it such an enigmatic show, um, The Musketeers. Everyone involved, it just makes it so brilliant. I remember started watching season one myself and went back, and it was like, you know, it's like, all right, okay, what's this? You, know, you knew what it's about, sorry. <laughs> you know, it's just sit down, let's start watching it. And that was it. And I was glued right the way through um, and absolutely gutted every time the season finished because it's like, no, come on, I want to see mm. more. Um, but as I say, the portrayal from yourself, um, obviously it's King Louis and everyone else um, in the various roles they were in, it was such a, or it is such a powerful, powerful drama. And there's a nice mix of humour in there as well. Um, subtle humour, which is brilliant. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think it's... It, um... You know, I think I think the first series, it, it took a little while for us to find our feet and to find what the um, what the show was going to be, really, because it could have gone many ways. There were there were a lot of elements. There were a lot of elements in the book, mm-hmm. and um, you, you know, it, it sort of flits very uh, sophisticated, but very lightly. Sophisticatedly, yeah. but very sort of lightly. What's the word I'm looking for? Like deftly or something. Um, between sort of action and humour and sort of romance in the book. Yeah. And, you know, you sort of, you have to make a choice with the show as to whether you're going to do the same thing or you're going to do something else or, and what the tone is and stuff like that. So I think I think we were all sort of working that out. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, and the second season it was a lot clearer, and I think you know we were all a lot clearer of what we were making. Yeah. Um, and 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 subsequently for the third series, and in a way, I don't know. Actually, I haven't seen enough of it to, to be able to tell, but possibly it's somewhere in between, perhaps third series, or maybe not. I don't really know. All right. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Um, I think there's only one other question I could probably ask, which might, which you wouldn't get into trouble for, since uh, <laughs> they're all about season three. Yeah. So I don't really want to put you in a position where you're. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, it's, it's okay. coming out soon enough. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> okay. Would you like to shoot more of the show? Obviously, season three. Would you like to see it continue after that? Yeah, I mean, I'd love to see it continue. Um, I would. Yeah, absolutely. I love Louis, and I love the show, and it would be lovely. Um, to do to, for it to go on and on and on. I'd like to go and do some other things as well, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, were that possible. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, I had a ball. I love the character, um, of course. Okay, excellent. The next one's from MB, which we kind of already. I'll just give a shout to MB because we kind of sort of talked about it anyway. Because she was also, where would you see yourself going after the Musketeers has ended, film, TV, or back on stage? Um, which we've kind of already. <laughs> Sorry, where would I see myself Self-go- going? Once yeah, the show's ended. yeah, yeah. I mean, once the show is ended, ended, uh, projects new. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I, I don't. Whatever life throws I genuinely you. don't have a sort of great overreaching plan. Like I say, I. It would, if I sort of come to the end of my career, hopefully in many, many years' time, and haven't 
sort of gone back to classical theatre at some point. I think I'm, I may sort of have a little pang of regret about that. But mm-hmm. like, so I'm not going to, I'm not, I, you know, as long as I'm working, as long as somebody's going to employ me somewhere in something interesting, I've been very lucky. But, you know, I don't consider myself a, you know, a, a movie star or, or a TV star or any of those things. Mm-hmm. I just consider myself an actor, yep. um, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm just as happy really on the stage, you know, uh, performing in front of 50 people as I am, you know, doing anything else. And, that, and that's the truth of it. That's, that is why I do it. Um, it's lovely uh, getting to work with wonderful, um, wonderful, you know, great productions and, you know, and, and I've enjoyed in more recent years, I've enjoyed a lot of the benefits of that. But, uh, you know, I, I genuinely, it, it is about, acting and about um the 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 you know without trying to sound too pretentious about the art you know if yeah. that's if, if if that's quite quite the right word for what i do <laughs> the you know the 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 work um no art's a good word for it yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right cool uh, i've got a couple from myself as well um your portrayal of king louis obviously um I'm not being sycophantic here, but it was exquisite. You captured the ruthlessness, naivety, fragility of the actual king himself. What research did you do into the real King Louis? I mean, he was only age nine when he became king, so... Yeah, I, well, I got a couple of biographies and I read them. You know, I sort of... I, I often do a lot of research and I expected to do a great deal of research throughout the whole sort of musketeers journey. Mm-hmm. But then it became apparent to me that the Louis that we were writing wasn't really the historical Louis and he, he almost, and he wasn't really the Louis of the, um, the De, De Mar book, um, yeah. particularly, uh, he, he saw, he was sort of heavily referenced to him, but, he, but he sort of became his own thing. And so I sort of put the books away right? because, because they, they sort of, they sort of started to become counter, productive in a way yeah and i just sort of i just decided once we'd sort of done the first series that i knew who he was now Mm -hmm. and he was my creation not my creation solely my creation the creation of the writers and you know adrian hodge's version of the historical and the and the fictional and then my contribution to that um as an interpretive person you know creative person Uh uh, uh, so, so then I, so then I sort of, sort of, yeah, I, th- that sort of detail, I, I didn't sort of dwell on so much, which is not what I expected to do, but that is what I did. I mean, mm-hmm. possibly that is was laziness, but I, I sort of don't think so. I, I tend not to be lazy about things if I find them useful. I tend to do what I think is most helpful and most freeing. Yeah, and um, yeah, and I think I've. I, I think I thought actually it wasn't it wasn't helping me in that case, but you know if I was uh, I played um, a serial killer in something and I didn't have very long to prepare it because it was all at the last minute, <laughs> right? And I was desperately reading as much as I could to try and sort of figure out who this person was and what they were like, mm-hmm. and and I absolutely clung to that material because it, it was all I had in this short space of time. I, yeah. I never the point where I felt the liberty to sort of. <laughs> You know, and uh, and still, you know, I, you know, I'm satisfied with my performance to some degree, but I, I still go well, nothing like the person. You know, like mm-hmm. when I sort of realize, you know, because, and that's just to do with time, really. You know, you can't. It's it's um, you can only you can only do so much in the time you're given. And but with Louis, I've had a real luxury. You know, it's been yeah. three years mm-hmm. sort of inhabiting this person. Hopefully, you get a bit better at it. Oh no, that's cool. The fact that you actually say you've, you've made the character your own in a way, um, so you, it's just amazing um, to be able to develop it in your own way, develop it in your own stance and not be limited to words um, of, obviously written in the books of the past, that you can actually move that out and make everything your own. It's uh, probably a better way, I think, in some cases like this, obviously, especially with the sort of the theme of the show and the fact that in the way that it, it handles handle situations but the louis that you've got i think fits absolutely perfect the um I, somebody 
Oh dear, I might better plug this in. I think my battery's about to run. I just <laughs> don't <laughs> okay. Certainly. Cool. Um, so yeah, uh, you'll throw me another. <laughs> Did you all, I mean, uh, sorry, obviously the production of uh, Musketeer is very well done throughout. Once again, the cast is shining through. Did you all have a good bond with each other? Um, off stage as well, yeah. Off yeah, set. yeah. I, I, it's one of the most, well, it's up there with the, some of the most sociable projects I've ever done. Um, mm-hmm. Hugo Spear is just the most sort of gregarious fellow, you know. He's just <laughs> so welcoming and yeah. takes the time to make sure everyone's having a good time and mm-hmm. looks after every guest, takes them under his wing type of thing, if he can. Cool. Um, and likewise, Luke is... Luke, uh, who plays Galtanian, is is yeah. uh, likewise. Um, you know, he's he, he's he will always, you know, come come round to my house, and you know, because they've all got apartments out there. I didn't. I I always had a hotel, right? Because I sort of came and came and went a lot more. But you know, he was always inviting people over, and mm-hmm. you know, come for a meal, come and have a you know a little party or something. You know, so so there was a great deal of that went on, and we all got very close. I mean, at one point. There was quite a consistent little band going on, <laughs> uh, with a few of us doing various bits and pieces. Um, cool, you know, and, and that included some of the crew and directors yeah. and some of the actors and some of the guests who come in. And I think we showed most of the guests a great time. Mm-hmm. I think most most of the guests who came on the show, I'd like to think, the impression that I got was it's you know some of the one of the funnest jobs they've come on to do for the. <laughs> For the social aspect, if, none, none, if nothing else, um, oh, yeah, because awesome. we all got, we all got on great. Brilliant. That sounds fantastic. Uh, my last question uh, on the on the Musketeers before the last question from a fan on Musketeers is: You had the pleasure of working alongside three gorgeous actresses, um, with the lovely Alexandra as your screen wife and is Mamie as Mistress De Winter, who is your mm-hmm. lover. You got to work both of those. Are they both as enchanting as real life in real life as they appear? Um, well, yes, they are. That's, <laughs> there's no other way to say it. Um, yeah, def- most definitely, they're very, very beautiful, and and and, and uh, Tamler as well, of course. Who wasn't anything to do with me, isn't the other? She was there. Yeah. Great beauty, but but and we've had we've had many on the series, and there are and there are more to come. Um, at, you know, uh, obviously, we need something because the fellas are so god awful to look at. <laughs> well, they are for you know. Yeah. What, what can you do? You need some. I mean, I, I, you need I, some I, sort I, of screen I, beauty I, on there, don't you? Uh, you know, <laughs> Luke and Santi and Tom and Howard. I mean, God, poor yeah. fellas. I know. Yeah. What can you do? Hey? I know. <laughs> awesome. Right. Last one is from Fiona Simpson. Uh, having played King Louis the Eighth in the Musketeers, are there any other kings? Or would you like to play your historical figures? You kind of mentioned a few of Shakespeare with the old uh, "Now is the winter of our discontent" and <laughs> the Scottish one, but any yeah. other historical kings? Any other historical kings I'd like to play? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm more than more than prepared to play any historical king if he sounds interesting. <laughs> Fair enough. I I don't I, I don't harbour any particular king, you know, uh, historic historical kings other than yeah, I mean the Shakespearean kings. And, yeah. Fantastic. Cool. Okay, moving on to The Hobbit then. Um, this is another big following of people wanting to ask questions of you. <laughs> From Anna XX, um, she would also like to put across that you are one of her favourite actors and she's very happy with your continued success. That's very cool. Uh, what, yeah, what kind of character would you think Alfred would have been if he'd been good? <laughs> <laughs> Compl- well, I mean, I think... I think the thing is, is that Alfred's not evil, you know, in the way that sort of Sauron or yeah, Saruman and that kind yeah, of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that kind of thing. You know, that he's not, he's not evil. Um, yeah, that's what I meant. Um, uh, you know, he's 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 just he's just a a, a coward. And a survivor, um, he he could easily have been a good person. He just didn't, you know, circumstances and um, sort of neglect and um, abuse. Mm -hmm. 
mistreatment have have warped just as his body is warped his his mind is also warped he doesn't he doesn't see the good in people he doesn't he doesn't have a great mm-hmm. deal of empathy he finds it hard you know he he probably needs the, the love of a good woman or something <laughs> fair enough um yeah you i say he wasn't evil i think it was a victim of circumstance <laughs> yeah he's just he's just one of those people you know you know he's a an idiot it's not his fault he doesn't have the me- the mechanisms to 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 be much better than that but he does have a sort of cunning about him uh, an inst- you know an instinctive cunning that's not that's not stupid um yeah and that's a dangerous combination <laughs> you see and sort of animal cunning uh but it but it but it but it will probably probably see you through or not <laughs> that's the case maybe <laughs> no that's cool okay from uh from adele carlisle behind the scenes of the hobbit again it's similar to the musketeers one behind the scenes of the hobbit you also had such a great time you seem to have had such a great time and you know seeing you at the conventions all together and stuff uh i guess it's true that you just had such a, a special bond the the hobbit guys yeah the hobbit guys sorry yeah yeah, I mean, we, uh, certainly at the time, we were very, very close. We were all thrown together for, for three years for some of them, and I, I was sort of there six months solidly. And mm-hmm. you know, I see, I see very little of them now, to be honest. Uh, you know, the, the occasional message here and there, and you know, at the conventions and things like that. Sometimes you see some people. Yeah. Um, you know, but it's but years and years have passed now. It's a long time yeah, ago, yeah. even though they keep bringing them out. You know, like <laughs> the actual day to day of seeing everybody. Yeah. Uh, you know, is not something I see as much, but it's always lovely to see people when I do. Mm-hmm. Um, because yeah, it was a very special job for all of us. You know, I'm sure. Um, it, you know, it doesn't get much bigger. Um. I, and yeah, we and, and I think generally. There were some, you know, there were some lovely individuals and lovely, and a lovely collective. Uh, yeah. You know, it was a lovely collective experience, which came from the top. You know, Peter Jackson sort of insists on nice people and a nice atmosphere, and it sort of, cool. it sort of creates one. Fantastic. How long? Oh, you just said you were in New Zealand for six months. You were over there for. Yeah, well, I mean, I, not consistently. I was sort of back and forth. But right. Okay. It turned out it was about six months in total. Yeah. So I think Adele would like to know if you were able to see any other parts of her country in your downtime. She's from New Zealand herself, so she said she just. I did. I saw plenty. I saw lots of parts. <laughs> Excellent. All of which, all of which would, you know, each bit is more staggering than the next bit. Doesn't really yeah. matter where you go. You just sort of fall in love with the next bit, don't you? Yeah, it's just one of those countries. Look, I say, looking at the brochures for when we're trying, hopefully going to go. It's just, oh, it's just every me. every time you look at some new tat, you know, the new pick page, it's like, whoa, just can't wait to go. Okay, so from Vendre, um, to help shape Af- Alfred as a character, did you create a backstory for him whilst amongst the elaborate set of Lake Town? And if so, what type of life would he have led up to the point when we first see him? Well, I did. I created, I created a vast backstory for him at the time. If you were to ask me what it was now, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember Several years passed. <laughs> I threw away, or, or I sort of, I think I shredded, in fact, a whole bunch of notes that I'd written about him recently. Oh, right. Space <laughs> to keep them anymore. But um, I'd, I'd written tons of stuff, you know, Books, book, notebooks full of stuff about mm-hmm. him and stuff like that. But none of which I have any sort of. If I look at them now, it looks like I'm reading hieroglyphics, but it <laughs> obviously meant something at the time. Like yeah. Strange quotes and lists. I think I did all sorts of you know bizarre things like inventories for the master and all, <laughs> you know all sorts of you know there wasn't much soap on it. <laughs> but um, you know, I, anything I, I created, all sorts of things, and I had you know history, family histories, mm-hmm. bio, biography. I, I, I went into all sorts of detail, and yeah, I mean, I, my my vague memory of it all is that he had a very hard life, and uh, and yeah, and was yeah. like I say, you know, neglected and abused, and and sort of pulled himself up by the bootstraps and became an important member of the society that he lived in, uh, whether he got. So that position of security, you remember that 
Lake Town is <clears throat> is in great is in sort of dire straits when we see it when we meet. Mm-hmm. It. Yeah, the yes. people are, are hungry, you know, and and there's a there's an air of discontent. Yeah. So, you know, and and rebellion, you know. So mm-hmm. so he sort of represents the sort of the te- dictatorship of uh, the master. You know, he he sort of yeah. he's the sort of it, intellectual for want of a better word henchman you know he's yeah. the counselor he provides advice he, mm-hmm. you know, uh, whether he provides the, the best advice in the world is you know and, and <laughs> his his moral compass is skewed um to be honest uh you know i think some of the but the some of the alfred fans probably have read can remember more of the backstory because i've mentioned bits of it but it evolved. To be honest, the backstory evolved as well. Like I was doing it for, working on it for a year before I even started the, you know, the job mm. or, or something like that from from oh, the first God. auditions. So, you know, I was thinking about it and doing things, and you, you know, it, it's all in it, it, it changed and evolved. And as, as the, you know, as the uh, well, I tell you a good example of how it changed. It was that for the first. Um, the first, sorry, my first film, which was mm-hmm. the Desolation uh, film, um, there was no real mention of gold, really. I mean, there were there was mention of gold for uh, for the dwarves, but Alfred wasn't quite as sort of gold fixated, yeah, and was sort of more. It seemed to me was more interested in power and survival and those sorts of things. But then, mm-hmm. subsequently, in the sec in the third film, the battle, and he he suddenly became very interested, much more interested in less interested in political power yeah. and yeah. political sort of security, and much more interested in in sort of coins, you know, in gold <laughs> and, and what he could get, which you know, which was, was probably a necessity as he sort of lost. But um, but that but then I suddenly had to sort of figure out where that came from and where that sort of greed and and yeah. uh, you know and and so so i sort of had to go and rethink about things that were in his past and stuff like that you know it's it, it's not an exact backstory is an exact science you sort of have to you sort of have to change things and uh, as as as, as the of, yeah. especially when the script is changing all the time which it was in the whole it was being written as we were going along yeah well, i suppose as well as once you find yourself in that character and you've been you say you've been immersed in that character on the actual screen as well, like you say, you, then you can start thinking of how, you know, maybe I could change it this way, change it that way, and, you know, and think this way, I, I guess, yeah. Yeah, that means evolution, most evolution of a character. Where, you know, when you get out on that screen and, and you know, it, it's there to support you. you. You can write as much backstory as you like, you know, you've still got to be, you've still got to go out and do the, <laughs> do the, the scene, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, but these things can... They can just feed the imagination and sort of give you something when you're out in that, when you feel that you're a bit at sea, sort of give you an idea and an inspiration for a, the way you say a line or the thought behind something mm-hmm. I, you know um, yeah, so I did quite a lot of that stuff, but if you were to ask me what it was now I, I'm afraid it's been a long time I've <laughs> you know, thought of many backstories of other characters oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Um, one from me is uh, obviously talking about Lake Town and the master of Lake Town. Um, what was it like working with Stephen Fry? He's, I think he's one of the most guys I respect the most. And if, if Mr. Fry, if you are listening to this ever, because I would love for you to come on as well. But, um, and my dad played for him once in the Footlights Club in Cambridge. He was a drummer, my dad. And I, I remember that's my dad's was my dad's claim to fame. He said he remembers yeah. being in Cambridge at the same time uh, as, Mr., as Stephen Fry. What was it like to work with 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 Stephen? It was a joy, you know. He's a he's an extraordinary person, um, you know, incredible company. Mm-hmm. Um, just sort of, you know, just full of stories and uh, and interesting things. You know, he yeah. he's somebody who collects and has a real facility for collecting mm-hmm. uh, information, and the information that he chooses to collect is just the most fascinating and sort of highbrow yeah. <laughs> stuff. But also, you know, he's so up to date with technology and he loves sport and, you know, he can talk to anybody about anything. And yeah. he's an excellent 
communicator and you know and uh, so he's you know he's an, uh, a real one off and an extraordinarily charming and brilliant person and uh, you know and uh, and and interesting and so complicated as a as a human being as well so he you know he's he's, he's lots lots of things it was a, it was a great joy and privilege to um to be in his company never mind working with him no oh, fantastic i say one day i'd love to meet him myself uh, i say i've obviously admired him uh, throughout my years as well from when he started out with Hugh Laurie and <laughs> for me that was when i first saw him with him i think a lot of people say the same thing you know He's got a, one of those things. Okay, final question for The Hobbit is someone... <laughs> this one I've not sent to you. This one, <laughs> this was a late coming in. This is from someone um, who I'll only announce as Jay. Okay. How many free lunches did you have before you actually did any work? Because you and Billy Connolly were apparently seeing a lot at the catering tent <laughs> in your civvies. <laughs> I think... <laughs> I'll say this. Jay might have been sat next to you at Comic-Con. <laughs> I see. Well... I mean, I, I don't know about free free lunches. I mean, it was lunch. It wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about, we didn't really think of it as a free lunch. It was just, it was just lunch. But uh, but it was free. I didn't pay for it. That is true. Um, uh, how many? I mean, three months worth, I suppose. Really, no. I mean, not before I did any work. <laughs> I, I, yeah, we we. I, basically, I used to go in. What well, I think this is what is re, what Jay is referring to is that uh, often Billy and I uh, would uh, we we shared a driver, right? The lovely Alicia, and she would come and pick me up in the afternoon mm -hmm. just before we knew lunch was going to happen yeah. and then she'd pick up go to Billy's place and pick up Billy and then we'd get in the car and we'd, and we'd have a lovely chin wag all the way and have a few laughs <laughs> and then we'd get and eat the most delicious lunch because they really did provide the most delicious lunch out there mm -hmm. and lovely um, New Zealand coffee which is so very good <laughs> and uh, and um, yeah and uh, and we'd do that every day whether we were working or not yeah. Uh, sh shamelessly <laughs> and it was something of a joke I remember Martin you know uh, Freeman um, would love to sort of make jokes about the fact that we were only here for the lunch and <laughs> do, do we ever do any bloody work and all this yeah. um, which was all which was all very all very funny but um, we, we 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 you know we, there was a certain you know uh, it's such a big sprawling thing. Um, you're out there and they know they need you, but some things get pushed back. So mm -hmm. much filming on that scale certainly is waiting, 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 especially yeah. when you're not, you know, The Hobbit uh, or Thorin or some, something, you know. Um, what was I saying? Thorin, what is wrong with me? <laughs> oh. um, uh, and, yeah, and so you end up... Um, you end up, uh, you know, hanging around and, and, uh, and, and that, that was some of the best food in town. So, so <laughs> well, why not hang out there? Gravitate towards that. Fair enough. Um, for those people who were listening, Jay is actually Jed Brophy. <laughs> you see, is that it, really from Jed? It was from Jed. I, I did ask him. Can Cheeky. He, <laughs> I, I did ask him. I, I sent him a message and said, have you got anything that you want to send to Ryan that I might make him laugh or trip him up? <laughs> <laughs> he's such a naughty fella. He's a great guy. Yeah, he did actually also say to send his love to you as well. He says you're a top bloke or choice, as they say in New Zealand. <laughs> so he that sends his love. <laughs> Cheeky bugger. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought it might be a bit of a... <laughs> but I'll, try... I'll see if he's got any, any little thing that might make, you... might make you trip you up when you're... <laughs> or make you suddenly think, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, he was another person. Him and Martin were particularly mean to us about the lunch thing <laughs> we would we were shameless we didn't care we we enjoyed those lunches That's we, didn't, we didn't have to eat them as often in full prosthetic well i'd never have to eat them in full prosthetic yeah be, yeah but they're, they're just complaining because they were constantly trying to shovel food <laughs> through all this food in their mouths through huge beards and and bits of plastic <laughs> No, that's cool. I did love the banter between you guys at Comic Con as well. It was hilarious. Um, just before we got to you, there was a. I don't know. I think there's some some girls. Obviously, plenty of girls have come to see you. <laughs> but there was a whole load. They were trying to take a selfie with you, and he was stood up in the background giving a little rabbit sign. 
And I think uh, he just turned around. He's like, "Yeah, I've got a photo bomb. I've got to make the photo worth something." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was. He was very envious of. He was very envious of the attention I was getting that day. Bless him. He's, oh, yeah. <laughs> he's, uh, no, he's good. <laughs> No, so I thought I'd ask after seeing you the banter that you had together there. I thought I'll, I'll ask him to see if there's anything he wants to get you with. Yeah, well, he's he's uh, he's, he's he's not wrong. We did we did eat a lot of lunch. <laughs> cool, <laughs> awesome. Upcoming work then for yourself. I've seen you've got something called A Hundred Streets, which is coming out this year, where you play Vincent. Is there yes. anything? What can you tell us about that? Yeah, that was something I filmed uh, a year or so ago. Uh, I think it's sort of been delayed, actually. I think it was supposed to come out this year, but for whatever reason, it didn't, and these things happen. Um, uh, it's it's an interesting thing. It's got Idris Elba in it. It's about London. I, I haven't actually seen it, so I can't really tell you a huge amount about it. I've only mm-hmm. read it, and again, some time ago now. But it but it's but it's really interesting and um, and sort of yeah, very contemporary and very uh, uh, sort of. It's got the sort of heartbeat of the street about it and yeah. uh my character is is a sort of uh somebody from the underworld who uh, sort of from the petty underworld uh but it's got a sort of twinkle of humor about it as well it's a very very short cameo um i i i, I just right. did it because it I, it, well, not i didn't just do it i did it <laughs> because uh it, it looked like fun and, and I liked the people involved and I just sort of if sometimes if something nice like that pops up yep, you know, yep. it's nice to sort of go and spend a day on set being somebody other than Louis <laughs> <laughs> fair enough get away from it all fair enough I'll keep an eye out for that one as well um, it should be out sometime this year is it yeah 2016 uh, is my understanding uh, I think there was a slight delay there for for technical reasons or something oh right okay cool um, okay, my final question, which is not relating to anything you've done. Have you seen Star Wars? I have. I went to the premiere. I'm, I'm oh, very a, nice. A very, a very close friend of Gwendolyn Christie, who plays Captain Phasma. All oh, right, awesome. Uh, Gwen and I were at drama school together, so mm-hmm. she very sweetly invited me along to see the premiere. Brilliant. Um, and I enjoyed it very much. Fantastic. It was a very good film. So. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's uh, it, they 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 really. Um, it reminds me of the, the ones from the seventies. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely that flavour about it. Yeah, definitely. Did cool. a great job. Definitely. Okay, brilliant. That brings me to the end of my interview questions for you today, Ryan. Thank you very much again for um, the time that you've spent. It's been absolutely You're amazing. You're very welcome. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, listeners, that has been Ryan Gage. Thank you very much, Ryan. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap, and that was an absolutely fantastic interview. Once again, thank you very much to the awesome Ryan Gage for your time um, today. I very much appreciate it, and I'm pretty sure that everyone uh, who listens appreciates it too. Thank you again. Hope everybody's enjoyed that. This has been Chris Gordon. You've been listening to Ramblings of a Hellblazer, and I will say sayonara for now. Goodbye, everyone.